What's going on everybody? I am back with another video and before we start today, please like and subscribe to this channel. That has been a huge help from all of you and I just want to thank you. Um, so please keep on the subscriptions coming. This is a pretty interesting video that I know it's a really hot topic. So today's video is about half spaces and we're going to break this up into a bunch of different videos because honestly it's such a uh, content filled topic that I could go on and on and on about them and the more I study it and the more I learn just the more information that keeps coming about out about the half spaces but today we will just define the half spaces and talk about how the half spaces can disrupt defenses so just to be clear so we're all on the exact same page the half spaces are oh, sorry about that the half spaces are the space between the central corridor and the wide areas so I am highlighting them in yellow so here's the half spaces highlighted in yellow I can even type that out for you just to make it super, super clear, half space and half space. So now what we have are the two half spaces labeled, and I'll label the other areas too. Wide area and wide area. Now that leaves the center. So these are the five vertical corridors that are often used and explained um, throughout. I see a lot of videos on them, a lot of concepts on them, and um, these are the field divisions and these are the names of them. So if, if you didn't know that before, now you know you can accurately define the half spaces and the wide area. And so now we can look at what this does for a team in possession. And I am just going to remove this and then we can talk about what this means so the team in possession and we're focusing on the mid block here because the concepts are really clear throughout a team in the mid block playing against uh, an opponent who uses the half space and just a basic 4-4-2 four, four, formation defensively or 4-2-2 um, depending on how you want to view the wide midfielders. They are quite narrow here and a bit higher, so you might want to make the distinguish between the, the wide midfielders and the um, central midfielders. So first off, we're going to talk about the ball is in the central corridor. And now, from here, oftentimes a team in the mid block if they're using a wide pressing trap, they will oftentimes, and even if they're not using a wide pressing trap, even if they're just in a mid block, they often have the cue of the ball in the central corridor or with the center backs in the central corridor. This is a cue for the defense to zone and become more space oriented. So now, I know some people don't like the word zone, um, so we could say more space oriented. Um, the terms are quite inter interchangeable, but um, they are marking the space rather than a specific zone. Um, but they are the terms are very similar. So now we're space oriented defense, and this this is um, the team focusing on compactness, distances, um, intraline, which is basically um, players. When players are focused on the space, intraline, it just means players in the same line. So the midfielders are focused on using each other as reference points and and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so here we have players, they're referenced space, they're using their, their teammates as a spatial reference and by doing so they create access to key players between the lines so progression cannot occur. So I'm just highlighting the key players here. And so now the whole goal of this is to force the team in possession 
to make them play into a less desirable area. So here we are, and conceding a less dangerous space while maintaining your defensive shape and controlling the space. And the ball's in the center, so easy. Um, the team is space oriented, controlling the space that they um, I have identified as most dangerous. So now, as the ball circulates, I think it's uh, probably be a good thing to. I just have to get rid of the half space quickly. There we go, and I'll redraw it for you. So now it's we're gonna just jump straight into the wide area, and a lot of these um, vertical corridors they can be split into half. So a lot of teams split the um, the central area in half, and we can even do that with the wide area. So you might have seen a field division like this. And the most common example is with Diego Simeone and using this for his defensive setup. As you see, it splits the field directly down the center and it just decreases the horizontal length of the vertical corridor, making it a more accurate, uh, useful reference points for shifting and horizontal compactness rather than just having one big central corridor. And then the same goes for the wide area. We can also split the wide area in half, and this can just tell us if the winger and fullback are on the same plane, same vertical line or not. And there's a bit difference, bit of difference that comes with being on the inside wide corridor or the outside wide corridor, but that will be for another video when we focus on the wide areas. So when the ball does get played into the wide area. This is oftentimes a cue for the team that is playing defense to then become more man-oriented while still while still protecting dangerous spaces. So when the team becomes more man-oriented they press and we can even set that up like so. I'm just shifting the players over. And there. Now we can see how the team has become more man-oriented because their press has been triggered if they are pressing the wide area. So we have a uh, player pressing the wide midfielder, pressing the fullback, very common. And then we have the wide fullback responsible for the winger on the opposing team. Then we have the central midfielder controlling the eight and he's on a different line vertically and horizontally than his wide midfielder and he can use his cover shadow so he doesn't have to be right marking him or he can use his cover shadow and be be in front of him and stay connected to his midfield as long as this player cannot receive the ball you run the risk if you use your cover shadow of him running in behind but uh, again for a different video we have then we have a cover player and then our balance player and so then we have our 10 cutting off the 6 and our 9 cutting off recirculation so this is just a really quick example on how the wide areas are mainly used for man orientation and then this is where we come into with the half spaces and the problems that can arise here. So I'm just going to readjust the pieces a little bit so we can see what happens to a defense when the half spaces are being used in the initial phase of a build up. Sorry if these pieces aren't perfect but I'm trying to move the video along so it doesn't get too boring. Okay, so if the ball is being circulated, common rotation is the 8 drops deeper in the half space, which releases the fullback. Or a common rotation I've talked about is the fullback releases and the winger drops. But just to keep it interesting and keep it a little bit um, varied from video to video, introducing new concepts, we can have the fullback just invert. Um, I know Pep has done this before, 
with. I think the first time he did it was last season with Mendy or maybe two seasons ago with Mendy um, as the fullback as an eight as the concept was first introduced. So let's just say that, but now in the half space, the ball is played, and now comes the trick. The players, it's not in the wide area, so the players don't have the cue to go and press, um, as oftentimes the ball, the, um, ball um, pressing cue goes to the fullback, and then the team presses, but this is not the case. The ball is in the the half space so now the defense one they have to shift over about the horizontal distance is about 15 yards the ball changes so significant distance that the team has to then change but now the problem is that the team doesn't go quite a man oriented press but they're stuck between their spatial orientation and now moving towards a more man oriented system so the team presses, but if they go too early and go to press the players too early, as we see here, then space opens up and the press won't be cohesive and there'll be left gaps and players will be able to exploit the space, especially because of the improved um, individual uh, field of vision in the half spaces and the diagonality and the connections it has to closer teammates so it it puts the defense in a bit of a tricky situation sometimes if the defense isn't well versed and well organized it can be be a, a bit of a stressful situation on them but one way you can think of this is it's like a preparation phase so when you're when the opponent plays the ball into the half space they're trying to disrupt the defense's shifting so if they're shifting over the key pass would just be a vertical pass between the lines or if the defense doesn't shift enough and they stay in their space orientation then now they can just go around the block or if uh, uncohesive um, press they can then go bypass the first line and find a direct ball but how to avoid this is think of the half space as a preparation phase and this is when your team starts to prepare to then go and press or to retreat and retreat back into their space orientation to block the spaces so the space here and avoid being broken from a defense perspective is the number one key and then also then the next key is being in a position to accurately press the ball win the ball back or accomplish your goal whatever that may be in the defensive phase so i just wanted to define the half spaces quick show you a few things a few movements nothing too complicated and just introduce the concept for today so i really appreciate everybody watching this video uh, like, subscribe to the page, that would be awesome, and I'll see you for the next one.